Next question is again from Secular Sakai asking, it's always astonished me that many people don't seem to know that Russia had a civil slash separatist war within our lifetimes after the fall of the Soviet Union back in the early 1990s until the 2000s. Could you please discuss the Chechen wars and the terrifying fact that Islamic jihadists successfully drove the Russian military out of Chechnya, declaring independence as the Chechen Republic of Ichkaria, I don't know, for just short of a decade? Well, it's not full independence, is it? Um... Well, I'm not no, the it's right not person full, to ask about this because no, I was it's not like no, okay. Baby. No, I'm correct. It's not a. It's not full on independent. It's not fully independent. It's still. It's it's more, it's more of an autonomous area, right? So that okay. So that in that entire area. Okay, first of all, we're not the best people to talk about this because we we haven't been like looking into this um, to the same level as the the analysis that we have on like Middle Eastern, you know, related issues, right? So we're not the best person people to talk about this. All I just, like the but I remember growing up with this being on the, all, all over the news all the time. Right. These are this is my childhood, nineteen nineties to two thousands. These are my childhood. I remember like this being on the news, especially where they when the Chechen took over that what was it? It was a theater or was it like a, like they took the hostages that was like a real like mess like i remember like people being obsessed with day-to-day -day coverage of what's happening hour to hour coverage of what happened over there so that was like yeah growing up this is by the way like a lot of people like post like 9 11 most of their experience with like islamic jihadists were like things related to al-qaeda or taliban or isis but growing up for us this is what we knew this is what this is what we associated with like Islamic terrorists was like war between, you know, um, Chechens and Russians. Right. And yeah, so this was like the main tar like we, our experience was the main target of like these Islamic terrorists were, was Russia. And yeah, they got like, there was such a, a even though with Russian sup uh, military superiority, like they were, it was really hard to completely, they're in a, oh, actually, it's very similar to Taliban uh, because they're very, even though they're very inferior, like, okay, so just like a Taliban compared to the United States is like very much weaker. Afghanistan's geography and the caves and the like mountainous regions make it, makes, and makes it very, very hard for even a superior military power to be able to completely control um, and defeat the Taliban. Like you could defeat them in short battles but overall war you can't it just it seems impossible to just get rid of them and at some point they just have to wait it out like they just have to keep fighting with you until you your resources are depleted and you just give up like they just you know because you could you could win you keep keep win, winning battles against them but because you cannot completely get rid of them they just have to play the long game and just keep you there until you be like, okay, I give up, I'm out of here, right? So it was the same situation. I thought I don't have much to say about this. Apparently, I do. It was kind of the same situations between between the Chechens, uh, Islamic che Chechens, and Russia, right? Russia was way more more of a superior military power to to them, but the mountainous regions that they were in, it was almost impossible. Like you could keep like to completely defeat them, even though Russia was like extremely more aggressive against the Chechens, like they bombed the bejesus out of them, right? They kept on like every time, like they the Chechens um, made an like did jihadi stuff on on Russia. They came, Russians were like, okay, how do you like this? And they just like way more like they bombed them way more aggressively um, than like you know like without any hesitation for like without any without any mindfulness of collateral damage or civilians being killed. Like the Russians were extreme, like they they destroyed entire cities like it was insane okay and the chechens were like defeated multiple in many wars but they weren't removed completely and they just like they just had to wait it out until the russians were like and but they were a lot more committed like i mean they're jihadis right like like they're they're a lot more committed to sacrifice <laughs> they like they're a lot more willing to uh, sacrifice things right um and at some point 
Russians were like, okay, we give up. So this is this is what this is the, the, the similarities with the Taliban is the difficult geographic regions for the mountainous regions for both the United States and Russia to be able to make it difficult for you to um, deploy your military just without any barriers like, um, to, to get rid of a jihadi group and also did the ideological uh, the, um, willingness for people to commit sacrifice and the longer term and the, the, the asymmetrical war that the Chechens were playing against Russia was similar to the asymmetrical mastery of the war that the Taliban was um, waging against the United States. And also both of them were playing the longer game, They're just waiting for the bigger enemy. It's kind of like a, a mosquito just like flying into the ear of like a giant bull. Like the bull is a lot stronger, but I just have to like stress you out and enough for you to keep like trying to attack me and just wear you out. And at some point the Russians were like, okay, we give up. Like this is like, so for people who think the United States is weak because they couldn't get rid of the Taliban, no, they're not weak. It's just like this is the nature of these multiple different factors making it very difficult for even a superior power to defeat you. You saw this happen again. And the Russians had to eventually come to a negotiating table. And yes, they didn't, I mean, they didn't become independent, like you're saying. Did you use the word independent? Yeah, declaring independence, that's not what happened. I, I, don't, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, they can like, declare that's... independence, but they aren't no. actually independent. They're autonomous. Yeah, and so right just now, actually, you declare it. That doesn't mean you actually yes. succeeded in. Um, made, uh, What's the name of that crazy tyrant, weirdo, cat-loving guy <laughs> in, that is in in charge of Chechnya um, right now? Ram Ramdan Ramdam. What is this? Ramdar. I his name. Kosilov. No. I don't know. That What's sounds the anti the anti gay person. Yeah. That keeps putting I, people in detention I think I got camps. It. Let me see. Yeah, the weird looking. Yeah, that guy is like that guy is like a Putin puppet, anyways. Like, how much independence can you have? Like, not like it, it originally started with being R autonomous. Ramzan Kadarov. Yeah. I was that guy. Kind of close. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. People are. Oh, Rudrash is coming. Yeah. Name. Yeah, that guy. That guy is like, like, yeah, that guy is just like now and uh, Putin's um, enforcer of enforcement arm in Chechnya, right? So, like that level of autonomy that that they had after all these wars is completely gone now. Anyways, that guy is basically that guy is in charge of like actually that they are now more now that they have like their semi autonomous control over the area. Putin is actually able to control. Uh, more the Islamists rising from Chechnya compared to before. You know what I mean? Because they used to be like Russians against che uh, Chechens. Now they have this guy in charge, and he's like very committed to making sure like the jihadis are not rising out of Chechnya against Russians. So now you have the Chechens controlling Chechens um, to make sure there's no anti uh, anti Russian Islamic uh, aggression against Russians. So it's it, this so called autonomy is working a lot better. <laughs> for Russia than it did before, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Does that get, does that make, uh, What do you think, secular Sekai? Does that make sense? What I'm saying? These are my again. We're not experts at all. We don't we don't have of this. We haven't been involved in this region as much as we have in other places. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. Uh, but let me know if you think like th what I said. You know, if it's it's a good representation of what's happening. Yeah, I think. Um, just getting at the fact that so few people know about this like including me this happened when i was an infant so i was i was literally i like didn't know anything really check out, check out, huh? good analysis okay cool <laughs> <laughs> atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.